Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. You know what else helps out? Tell your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Go away, fly. Anyway, <laughs> so I have Molly Hattingway. Battenhouse. Battenhouse. <gasps> Molly Battenhouse, and I, we just went over this right before I started. <laughs> Sorry, Molly, at least I remembered the Molly part. Um, anyway, she is with Jackson Family Wines, yes, yes. Uh, a master of wine, uh, and um, she's here in Fredericksburg. We're at the Herb Garden. I think it's the Fredericksburg Herb Garden. Um, I don't know why I'm looking at you. I know, it's called the Herb Garden. It, it <laughs> is the herb, in It's called the Herb Burn, Garden. So. I've never been here. It's a beautiful spot. You can kind of see some of the herbs back here, and... Um, uh, she just did a little seminar here about some wines, and I'm um, excited to uh, sit down with the Master of Wine. It's going to be my first Master of Wine on a, <laughs> on this type of thing. I have met Doug Frost, but that's about the only other person I've met. <laughs> He's Doug. <laughs> He's Doug. Anyway, uh, so Molly, tell us who you are and how did you get here? All right. So, um, as you said, I'm Molly Battenhouse. I'm a Master of Wine. I'm also an advanced sommelier with the Court of Masters. Absolutely. Um, whew, a lot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> how did I get here today? Well, a plane from Philly this morning, but there you go. <laughs> the larger picture. Uh, I don't know how far to go back, but how I ended up in the wine business it was kind of naturally. I, um, when I was in college, started working in restaurants and saw some friends of mine doing that. I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. You're making a lot of money. You work two or three nights a week. Looks like fun. I want to try it. And so I did. And um, that was the bug that bit me there. It wasn't necessarily wine at that point because I knew mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. So I grew up in Georgia. And my parents drank wine. I didn't, you know, know much about it. Um, but I didn't, I learned a little bit about wine there, but I kept on working in restaurants as like a side gig as I was in college. Yeah. And then when I graduated, so I have my BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts with painting and sculpture and a, a double major in business management. And went to, you know, work in kind of my field and then kept being drawn back to the energy of restaurants. And it's just so much fun. So then I decided mm -hmm. to jump in with both feet and I always grew up cooking with my mom. My mom was also a big gardener, so it's pretty apropos that we're sitting here in this beautiful, beautiful garden while we're doing right, this. Right, yeah. And, um, and I decided to go to culinary school. Not and just so, any culinary school, though. Culinary Institute of America. Yes. yes. <laughs> Not just any culinary school. The best culinary school, right. in my opinion. Of course, I went there, so, you know, I'm opinionated. But it was a wonderful school and started really learning about wine there. So I started drinking more wine, which I... May have already done before this point a little bit, you know, just <laughs> right? dabbling here and there. Is a couple of the restaurants I worked in Atlanta had pretty nice wine lists, so okay. I learned a little bit there. Um, expanded on that when I went to culinary school, you know, learned about European wine, which that took a minute to sort of get the whole place name grape mm -hmm, down together. Right. And by the time I did, and I of course fell in love with it, so graduated from there, worked in New York City for a little while for Daniel Boulud and uh, a couple of other chefs. But then found myself working at the wine shop where my roommate worked. And, you know, okay. eight years later, <laughs> I was still there. You're still there, right? <laughs> I was still there. <laughs> and that's really where I started my journey in, in formal education for wine. I figured if I'm working in the wine business now, when I went to culinary school, I wanted to learn more about cooking. I'd grown up cooking with my mom, but I didn't know a lot of right, basics. Yeah. And so I thought I'd better learn that about wine too. So immediately enrolled in some WSET classes and went all the way through diploma. And then a whole group of us in New York, and this is kind of a cool story. Some of us started together an advanced certificate, like okay. Jennifer Simonetti and I were in class together. Okay, cool, yeah. Riley I have met her too, yes. <laughs> and we all went through the MW program and mm -hmm. pretty much all of us passed. So we all became masters of wine, which is kind of cool. There were like seven or eight of us. Right. And um, now most of them are still in New York, which is kind of cool. But that's what kind of led me here. So a friend of mine worked for Jackson Family, and when he told me about the job, I thought, oh, that sounds pretty cool. And they didn't have a master of wine um, on board at that okay. time so right. um, so i ended up getting the job and i've been here for for seven years that's awesome so, yeah it's a great company yeah i mean if, if you don't understand ja i mean it, jackson family wine is not just kendall jackson though that's 
the start of it. Exactly. Um, they have a lot of cool stuff. They are still family owned. Yep. They are large, but they are family owned. And um, I'm familiar with most of the brands. I mm -hmm. probably can't name them all, but <laughs> you have brands all over, don't you? We do. Yeah. Yeah. We have about 55 wineries now um, around the world, but most of them centered in Napa and Sonoma County. Sonoma County is actually where the bulk of our vineyards and, and wineries are located. But we're in the Central Coast. We're in Oregon, France, Italy, Australia, Chile, South Africa. And, oh, actually, we're in Canada. We have two wineries you now. Do, uh, yeah, don't you? Canada, uh, we just purchased another I don't remember. One, I don't and remember. in Washington State. Yes. <laughs> so we we are expanding, which is right. um, which is kind of interesting. You know, it's it's fun, and you know, we are we are large, uh, but we're one sixteenth the size of Gallo, so we're not huge. But right. They always say we act bigger than we are. Um, yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I was a little busy milling around. I didn't get to hear everything you were talking about today, but I did catch a little snippet, something about that you don't have, like, uh, you basically were saying that you don't have, like, uh, a, a board members as right. far as, like, stockholder type of thing. You know, so kind of talk about how that versus, say, not specifically Gallo, but maybe, like, a large conglomerate multinational well, is Gallo different is still yeah family run they are family, family run, aren't they? Yes. Owned and run by gina gallo so another yeah you know big wine company run by a woman which is you know very commendable i i love that and they are they are still a family so we are family run and owned so we don't have you know shareholders we don't have stakeholders we do mm -hmm. have a board of directors but they're right. mostly family right so <laughs> <laughs> it's run by a family and because of that um and because we own most of the land that we farm for our vineyards, that link back to agriculture becomes really, really important and having, um, making a strong message, I think, in terms of what we do, because we are larger and people do look to us as an example or as a leader in the industry. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that makes me very proud to work at Jackson Family is, is where we're leading in terms of things like regenerative farming and regenerative agriculture. And we can do these things that may initially cost us a little bit more money and maybe, you know, our crop drops a little bit in right. a few years as we're sort of trying, we're pretty much 100% sustainable now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in early years, transitioning from conventional farming into organic, sustainable, biodynamic um, can give a little bit of loss of yield. So, you know, it's it's important to the family. So they'll take those losses and yeah. and end up with better land, better grapes, and then better stuff in the glass. Right. So I've got the Grand Moraine. I same. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've had other, I, I was, I was letting her know I, I had, I've had the Chardonnay, I've had the Pinot, but I've never had the sparkler. So awesome stuff to try. Um, they, I know. So today's event was like kind of a comparison of some sparkling wines mm -hmm. and some still wines. Um, some of them are from Jackson family. Some of them weren't. Um, but you know, I definitely recognize a few a few brands. Uh, the, your La Cigue from Saint Emilion. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't remember the name of the Chianti Classico, but I know I've seen it. Uh, the Arcano. The Arcano. Yes. I, I it was I couldn't remember it, but I, I've seen it before. I'll have a little bit of that later. I love the La Cigue. Um, it's great stuff. Um, and then you know the Grand Moraine, outstanding Oregon thing, uh, Oregon, Oregon wine. Unfortunately, I didn't visit them when I went to Willamette. But that's okay. Um, I visited There's a ton of There's always time to go back. Well, I went to Willa Kenzie. Perfect. I didn't get. I didn't do an interview, but I did the tasting, and they were so <laughs> cool. They they once they realized who I was. I went on a Saturday, which was the worst time to go, but it was my last winery, oh. and so they pulled out some like older stuff, and I took home like. I've got a nice library. Yeah, they, they, they pulled out some cool stuff, but um, so. So your your role at Jackson Family is an educational role, right? Yes. So what what does that entail? What is your kind of your day to day, or what what do you oh, get to do? Million dollar question. Yeah. My mom's always like, "What do you do, honey?" I'm like oh, it's different <laughs> every single day, mom. So um, yeah, so we go out in the market. Sometimes I'll be working and paired with a salesperson, and we will see some accounts throughout the day and show them some wine. We may take some people out to lunch and show yeah. them some wine at a lunch, and and maybe you know an event in the evening. Uh, last weekend actually was something a little different. I was in New Orleans for New Orleans Wine and Food Experience. Okay. Yes. So we had a couple of our winemakers in town and we did um, some events. We did what they call their labs. So the learning labs, which were, uh, we were a little smaller this year. So last year we did rooms of 100 people and this year we had about 40 people at each seminar. And we did one with La Crema talking about terroir okay. and the effect of terroir on wines, which was great with our winemaker, Craig McAllister. 
And then I did another session called, gosh, what, what did we call it? Let's Get Vertical. So we were talking about weather and elevation and how that affected wine. And I was paired with a local meteorologist. All right, so cool. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, so the, yeah, La Crema. So I have to say, you know, I, I've, I'm somewhat familiar with La Crema. And I haven't had all of them, but everything I've had was really good. But I, I'm just going to say this right now. The Monterey Pinot, it's like a $12, $13 Pinot, is incredible. And I'm not saying because of her. I would say this if she wasn't even here. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Someone got me the bottle. Mm. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh, I know how much this is, but I never had it. But I was like, well, they usually do good stuff. So, but you never know. And I had it. I was like what this thing was incredible i mean for the price like right. it, it could have been a double it could have been a two time on that mm -hmm. um so yeah don't don't discount like these other things and then speaking of stuff that's you know inexpensive that that you have um i remember james tidwell master sommelier um and you're going to pursue this aren't you kind of i have sat the master sommelier okay. exam now seven times Whoa, so wow. i didn't quite make it this year my travel schedule was a little crazy okay. but uh so there was there was one time at tech Sum, um, he, I guess he poured us some KJ Shard, just, oh, yes. just oh, regular yes. KJ oh. Shard blind. Actually, I think it was for Tiwa. I think it was like the volunteers and we're drinking and he goes, you like it? Yeah, it's great. He goes, don't, don't sleep on this. Basically. He was like, you know, yes, it's a, you know, you make a lot of it. It's out in the market and it's not, it's not, it's not expensive, but it is delivers its quality stuff. And, you know, that's one thing I think people need to understand, uh, especially on the Kendall Jackson side. Um, yeah, we can talk about Cardinal and all this, you know, the, right, the, right, the, right. the stuff you get to play with. Right. But what keeps the lights on? What, get, what allows you to experiment? What allows you to really, you know, do some cool stuff? And you're still putting great quality into that. Mm -hmm. um, you touched upon uh, regenerative. So tell me some more about what you guys are doing with that. Because this is a newer subject for me. Right. Yeah. And it is something that we are looking at a lot more, especially in terms of greenhouse gas emission and carbon sequestration and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to right some of the wrongs that we've done over right, the years. Yeah. And it's a big project of Julia Jackson, Julia and Katie. So those are the daughters of Barbara and Jess. Um, and Christopher is also very involved. But Julia and Katie, their main focus really is sustainability. Julia has a global outreach and Katie really works on our day to day. Uh, she and her husband, Sean Kajiwara. He used to be our, our head of our vineyards in Sonoma County, and he works hand in hand with Katie in terms of sustainability. But looking at the challenges that we're facing in terms of drought and climate change and trying to find some ways that are um, fit the ethos of the family, which has always been agriculture and farming mm -hmm. and knowing that their family is growing up on this land. They've always had a 300 year vision and a 300 year plan. It's not something they want to turn over in a day or two. They want generations to be able to enjoy these grapes in this land. So sustainability has always been at the heart of what we do. Right. Um, La Crema comes off the grid several times a year. We have one of the largest banks of Tesla batteries, which is just something a little bit different. We are working on harnessing some wind energy, too, as well down in Monterey, which you mentioned. Cool, it's yeah. quite windy in Santa yes. Barbara County. So working a little bit more. We've got the solar power working on wind power as well. But the regenerative is something that we're really sinking our hats into. So sustainability, where it differs from organics and biodynamics, is that it really wraps in the human element. You know, Absolutely, you, me, yes. the vineyard workers, the community, and that's super important. Regenerative is, is part of our way in this no-till farming of being able to trap the carbon emissions into the ground where they belong and not re-release them. So no-till farming, doing a lot of cover cropping, a lot of mulching. Uh, what else do we do? We now have a flock of sheep. Cool. And chickens. Nice. Uh, so if you go to La Crema, actually in the heart of the Russian River Valley at our Sara Lee's Vineyard Estate, uh, we have our flock of sheep. You'll see them out in the field and also the chickens, which are, you know, doing their duty. They're, they're weeding, they're tilling, they're leaving behind the fertilizer that's great for us and allows us to do this work naturally. It also creates a little bit more uh, diversity, uh, biodiversity, mm -hmm. which yeah. is really, really an important tenet of biodynamic farming and of of regenerative farming is having a whole a holistic environment around. So everybody's doing their their part, the animals, yeah. the bees, the birds, the ground, the plants, us, and it all really works together. And really the end point of that is leaving the land better than we found it, um, but also gaining great grapes yeah, to make absolutely. fantastic wine with. Absolutely. Uh, I, 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 almost two years ago now, I did a whole thing about farming, everything from industrial or conventional or 
um, whatever whatever the official term, uh, intensive farming, the official term, right. all the way to regenerative. And I know regenerative exists until somebody, uh, one of the reps came in, a rep from somebody else, and told me about uh, Kiss the Earth. Yes. The movie, right? Yes, Kiss the Ground. Kiss the Ground. Kiss, kiss, kiss something. So yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, whatever, I'll, I'll watch it, you know. But I was excited about the regenerative, like, you know, because it seems like it takes, like, organic and bio to another level. And um, the movie's fine. I, it's excellent. Well it made. Was. Yes, very well, well made. made. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, it really opened my eyes to what, what ROC or the ROC certification. Um, I, as far as I know, there's only two wineries that, that mm -hmm. actually have their ROCs. Um, but I'm sure there's more coming, but, uh, there yeah, certainly will be. Cause yeah. there's a huge interest in it. More and more companies around the world are, are wanting to partner with us and, and help yeah. us further this movement. So there's another movie that I'm, I'm not sure if you heard me mention, cause I might've just talked to a couple of other people right, about yeah. it. Something I just watched called The Biggest Little Farm in the World. No, I haven't heard of that one. Oh, it's fantastic. And if you're really interested in learning about regenerative farming and what it can do to a piece of land that's practically barren, you should watch it. It's a little painful because it's farming and you know, animals and all right. those kinds of things. Yeah. I'm like, I get very touched. But this couple uh, ends up having to leave L.A. and her dream, she was a chef, always wanted to be to have a regenerative farm and okay. to have a piece of land that she could farm. And so they buy this piece of land that's been farmed forever and it's just dusty and dry and there's like no life. And over the course of, I think it's seven years, they follow this couple. They take that plot of land and turn it into this amazing farm that is just teeming with life. Awesome. And it's 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 a beautiful movie to watch. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've touched upon, I think, most of the highlights. Is there some highlights that we haven't touched about? Because I know you're short on time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, there's so many. I think, you know, the one um, thing I would say, yes, we, you know, again, going back to being a larger company and, and our major product, part of our major product being our Kendall Jackson Fitness Reserve Chardonnay. Yeah, right. It gets better every year, which is amazing. It's an amazing wine. But we have about 55 wineries around the world, and each of them have a there, there, and a place, and a team of winemakers and viticulturalists, and, and they all get to operate independently, and they really get to do their own thing. Right. So as long as they're making great wine and, and you know, following in what the family wants, which is um, being good to the earth, being good to your people, being good to your land, making great wine, and she allows them to have pretty much complete autonomy which means cool. that all of those wineries have a very different flavor and style from one another, which for me yeah. is important because I like to be able to show the diversity of what we can do and what our winemakers can do. Right. So yeah. that's just fun. I mean, I can, I can say through, through some other things I've, I've seen in the past, uh, Kendall Jackson or Jackson family really, they, they are a company that really I feel like takes care of their people, really yes. cares about their people. Um, I don't talk about my employer, but the employer I do work for is one of those types of employers. I've only really worked for one other employer that was like that. Um, most other employers, you're just a number. So right. it's great to uh, be associated with you know, a company like that. Uh, and I applaud the Jackson family people for, for being somebody that actually cares about their people. And it's not just a bottom line thing. It's not just a bottom yeah. line thing. And that's one of the things that when I was first you know, looking to come to work for this company that struck me that. Uh, most of the, a lot of the employees have been here for 20, 25, 30 years, and several people on my team have been with the company for over 25 years. Yeah. To me, that speaks volumes. You don't stay somewhere for 25 years if it's not a great place to be. So, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So I think uh, we're going to have to wrap things up. <laughs> um, so uh, I just want to really thank you for coming, yeah. for, for sitting down with me for a little bit. Uh, coming to Texas. I'm sure it's not your first time here, but coming to Fredericksburg. It's my which first is, time in Fredericksburg. Yeah. For first sure. time. It, that's, we, my first time here at the Herb Garden. Yeah. First deal. You know, a lot of people don't come to Fredericksburg. Not the last. Yeah. But, um, and, and this is from, uh, Andre Boada was very instrumental, I'm sure, in getting you here. Uh, if you don't remember, Andre and I sat down about a year or so ago. That's how I know Andre. Oh, we did okay. an interview for uh, the Texas Hill Country Symposium. Uh, so I want to thank him for letting me know uh, what was going on so I could come <laughs> up here and go, I want an interview. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. So, folks, uh, just make sure you're clicking the like button, hitting, you know, smashing the like button, hitting subscribe, whatever you got to do, uh, and uh, tell your friends about it. And uh, we'll see everybody again next time.